On the morning of the 26th of June, a man is rushed to hospital in a critical condition, and scene of crime officer Simon Pohl is called in to investigate. I'm going to have to ask you guys to be careful so as not to trample all over my crime scene here. So uh, if you can stay behind me, and uh, I'm just going to go into the scene and uh, assess it as best I can. Good morning, gentlemen. That's fine enough to see you. This is the initial area of disturbance. It would appear that there's actually a, a visible shoe print here indented in the soil. It also appears that the soil has then carried on on the shoe and has been dropped on the carpet here. We'll try an electrostatic lift on that. I'm just going to indicate here the parameters of the mark for the photographer so that he knows what to photograph. This is just an address label to identify the shoe mark when it goes to court. So we know where it's come from. Simon immediately enlists scene of crime photographer Paul Canning so he can record the shoe marks before anything is disturbed. We've got quite a good uh, example of a shoe mark in earth uh, here, which has been labelled up, and the most important thing really is to um, put an element of scale in to show the size. And the next thing really is, it's important to actually get the camera square and over the top of the mark. Once the camera's actually been set up, the next most important feature is the lighting. So with our lamp here, really, because the mark is in earth, we can actually see clearly this pattern showing up. So, as well as helping us to focus up the camera, the lighting here, using the Seek and Search lamp, is going to actually determine where I'm going to put my flash. So I can actually light the mark like that, and then I can bring my flash gun in and uh, take the shot. The scene of crime photographer and videographer Build up a picture of events that took place. All the images gathered will be shown in court. Nothing is edited or erased by law. The baseball bat is of obvious interest, as it may have been used in the struggle. Yeah, we've got a weapon here. It looks as though it may have been used in the assault. We don't know who it belonged to, but I'm going to take it away and put it in a weapons tube here to preserve any evidence that might be on the surface. But the real find is the pair of glasses. Closer inspection reveals fibres trapped in the hinge. A possible lead. Let's go back to the shoe mark that uh, we saw initially when we came in. The shoe appears to have trodden in the soil here and then it's been transferred into the pile of the carpet. If you add some oblique light to it here, we can see it. 
Now, we'll be able to lift this by using an electrostatic lifting machine, which puts about 40,000 volts uh, across it, and hopefully will li lift the charged particles onto this sheet. You can see how it sucks down onto the carpet. OK, let's see what we've got. Now, this should have drawn the dust out of the carpet. And if you add some oblique light here, you should be able to see the shoe mark. Now, hopefully that will be identifiable. This is the area where the victim was found on the floor after the assault. Now, in my experience, the assailant often leans across the body and will touch the areas around here. So I'm going to get Pete with our crime scale to have a look at this area and see if we can bring up some evidence. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to search this particular part of wall um, using the crime scope. We're actually going to be using the ultraviolet light source to actually see if we can produce any marks that we can't see with the human eye. Uh, so we can have the lights off, please. The crime scope works on the principle of fluorescence. Light emitted at one wavelength is absorbed and then re-emitted at another by certain chemicals. This phenomenon is what causes white clothes to glow under UV light in a nightclub. And Simon's hunch is right. A hand mark is revealed. Yes, it's a very, very nice mark. Shouldn't be a problem lifting that one at all. What I'm doing here is dusting for fingerprints. I'm just applying aluminium powder to the surface, and that's sticking to any moisture that might be on the surface. Fingers, as they sweat, leave moisture on the surface as it's touched. And that's in the rich patterns of the fingers. Now obviously we've got lots and lots of different marks here. And hopefully we can pick up some of the villain's fingerprints. Right, I'm going to lift the fingerprints off now. For this we use a low adhesive sellotape. Just very simple stuff. The tape lifting the powder off the surface. and lifting the marks away. These are then put onto a clear plastic sheet, a sheet of Kobex, and that then becomes my exhibit, which will be sent up to Scotland Yard, and the marks will be compared on the Police National Computer against any sets that we might already have on file. It's all a bit blue peter, but it works. Yeah, I've got a sign across it. That's the only other thing, because I have to make it my exhibit. Do you mind if I do that? And a similar technique, this time with iron filings, is used to recover the finger marks on the wall. 